uh, let's start. Uh, I'm assuming here that there is knowledge in the audience about uh, attestation and TPM in general. So I will just jump straight to the technical part. Um, Svet uh, would have been here with me, but he uh, couldn't join us. Uh, so one quick clarification, we are actually from Bulgaria. It's a country in Eastern Europe. Uh, our neighbors are Romania, Greece, and actually a bit above Romania is Ukraine. And yeah, just to give you an orientation where we are in the world. So why are we doing what we're doing? On one side, security in uh, internet connected device in general, devices in general has not been adequate. Uh, of course, it depends on what you want to protect, uh, what is your threat model. Still, uh, we see that end users and overall um, enterprise devices are not well protected. And this is true also for embedded systems. So while end users benefit from attestation and the technology of having reg regular evidence about the health of, of the system, uh, and, I, and I'm of course talking about Microsoft Windows and so on, and now cloud users are benefiting from that as well, uh, thanks to some efforts at Google and others, um, like Keyline, for example, uh, for containers. This, is, this was not available for IoT and edge devices. So moving forward, uh, why attestation is something that we need as an industry, um, or uh, even as uh, advanced users, if you will, because secure boot is definitely not enough. It gives us this one guarantee at the start of the system, and literally a second later, the moment you boot, you don't know what's the state of your system. And the danger is that whenever your system is changed, it continues to run. With IoT devices, this can be months on a battery, uh, even some, somewhere uh, very remote, like uh, I designed uh, one device for IoT tracking in the mountain, right? So stuff like that, uh, unless you have a firmware update or the battery is changed, there's no reboot, no reboot, no guarantee. Uh, this gets even scarier when we talk about edge devices that are constantly powered on, the routing data that have compute power to do things. So attestation helps us by providing continuous check. And the great thing um, I like about the station that it's customizable. Uh, what we protect, what we measure, um, is up to us. So I'm just checking uh, the clock. So again, I want to have more time for questions rather than uh, having me just talking. Uh, there are um, at least two topics that I would love to discuss in this um, talk. Uh, so how do we do that? This is very, really high scope, uh, big picture. We have our uh, an actual security cloud. And on the other side, there is our Nactrus agent. Now, where this agent lives is a very interesting question. Of course, we want it to be in a memory isolated space. Is that uh, necessarily uh, true zone M? Uh, is that necessarily um, hardware provided memory isolation? Is it just an MPU, a memory protection unit? Uh, it, it's really up to the use case, to the customer and to the system. Um, we were surprised to find out that actually in industrial systems, um, companies lack adequate security to a degree where they want an act trust regardless of the fact that they don't have trust zone. They just want to have attestation and regular evidence about the device health check. So this is just a big overview. And then what we use, a, what we use as a hardware root of trust, okay, maybe it's a secure element, maybe it's a trusted platform module, or maybe we're using the built-in uh, cryptography acceleration together with some OTP or just secure memory in trust zone. It's really up to the use case. In this particular uh, talk, uh, I'll focus, of course, on the TPM case in a discrete TPM, not a firmware TPM. And although this has been difficult for the past uh, several quarters because of the shortage of chips, still we see a rising adoption of TPMs in uh, industrial systems and embedded systems in general. And of course, having a discrete TPM has its uh, pros, as I'm, a, I'm sure most of the audience knows, um, the, the physical tamper-proof uh, side channels attacks and stuff like that are more difficult. Um, so all this, I guess it, it sounds obvious and, and even easy to, to people who have um, experience with TPM or uh, attestation. But the fact is that, as, that attestation with a TPM 
for cortex M based devices did not exist before an actress. Uh, of course, we have to mention, honorable mention, uh, for the Azure Sphere that came out in uh, 2017. Uh, at the time, I even uh, just uh, wrote in my uh, blog post that uh, actually Microsoft annihilated everyone by having a solution where everybody else was uh, keeping it behind closed doors, right? Because I'm sure uh, proprietary remote attestation solutions exist to perform these checks to create an evidence inside a hardware security module connected to our main SOC or whatever. So uh, the bad thing about Microsoft Azure, well, it's done uh, in a way that corporations like to do it uh, in, a, in a very vendor locked way. You can choose either MediaTek or the newest NXP and that's it. However, um, the industry has spoken back to Microsoft saying, well, this is great, but we don't want to use just two chips, right? You cannot tell uh, some Samsung or some um, smart fridge manufacturer what chips to use because they're actually looking at uh, features and prices and so on and so on. So Microsoft Azure Sphere, although great, uh, it has two drawbacks. First, drawbacks. First, it's centralized. You need to use Microsoft Azure. That's it, period. Whereas with um, our solution, it's up to you. Do you want it on-premise? Do you want it with AWS? Do you want it with Microsoft um, IoT Central, Azure IoT Central? Up to you. Uh, where Microsoft have been really uh, trying to um, force the, the, the customers to say, hey, use our infrastructure and you're worries free. And that's valid in some cases. So that's the, 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 the first drawback, centralization. And the second one, it runs only on two chips. Uh, and Recently, Qualcomm also announced they're releasing something with Microsoft Azure Sphere, uh, but again, nothing to be seen yet, and three is not that much better than two. So uh, just going a step back, sorry, and I'm just rushing to it so we get to, to a discussion point. Uh, one thing more that is a drawback for all these systems is actually that the Azure Sphere is firmware solution, typically, that lives in a Cortex-M4 that is a coprocessor to the main Cortex-A like the MediaTek, the NXP IMX8, they're all Cortex-A plus Cortex-M. So what I'm trying to hint here is that embedded systems like industrial sensors, smart metering for energy companies that are really vulnerable and in the field, um, th those devices cannot be captured by, by Microsoft Azure Sphere. They cannot be protected by Microsoft Azure Sphere. And this is what we're trying to break. Um, we even have a proof of concept for Cortex-M0 that just has an MPU. Uh, and that's per uh, uh, customer request. So again, there are trade-offs and we don't, uh, we prefer to have trust zone in there. We prefer to have a physical TPM. Sometimes that's not possible. Sometimes you have to use a firmware TPM. Sometimes you even have to use just a secure element. What I'm trying to hint here is that we are trying to break the barrier and say, hey, it's easy to use it, but uh, it didn't exist before. So take it with a grain of salt. We're just the first one trying to do this. And probably we didn't do everything right, but we definitely uh, are raising the, the security threshold. So it's a bit more difficult for attackers. And it's a bit more obvious when your device doesn't send a fresh evidence or when the, where the evidence doesn't match, at least you get awareness, right? We cut the time to response. So at the station available today here, I've gathered um, what I'm aware of that uh, you can try out. You can literally download it today on, from GitHub and try it out. Um, so we target IoT and edge devices. I've talked about the different hardware root of truth that it's up to the, to the, to, to really to the use case. Where Keylime, um, another great example, open source project, uh, targets containers, has a dependency uh, on Linux IMA. Um, and by the way, uh, Tori Summer, uh, who is one of the maintainers, um, will be talking at uh, our TPM Dev conference about the new things, the advanced stuff, and maybe how you can have evidences without the Linux IMA with their new Rust agent. So this is all great, but it targets containers, servers. It's used by IBM Research in their cloud uh, right now. Uh, so IBM ACS, very old. Uh, at the same time, it's working. It's a reference. It's a working reference. It has dependence on the um, IBM stack that is uh, dependent on Linux. Uh, Nokia A10 uh, attestation engine uh, from Ian Oliver. Also a reference, it works, you can use it. Also targets uh, more high-end servers, Linux-based embedded devices. Um, so what we're trying to do is either go in the, in the other way. And um, now here I'm trying already, I'm, I would be happy to take some questions, although I'm not at the end of the talk. 
um, you know, let me know if there's something. I'll check the 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 the, uh, the chat uh, because here it gets really interesting. Some of the challenges that we faced because I'm not claiming that we have all the answers. I'm just here to share our experience and what we did. So uh, first issue, first challenge with attestation. Hey, is enrolling a TPM chip, a hardware security module, the same as enrolling the device? Mm, not really, not in the physical world, right? At the same time, we have to make that assumption, again, depending on the use case. So often what we do is we enroll the TPM with its um, public uh, EK key, the unique uh, key that comes from manufacturing time. Uh, then we create a certificate for the device. Uh, maybe we, we create um, LDF ID and so on. But typically for attestation, you have to make that assumption. It's not uh, always the case, but this is what we did in our case, that enrolling the TPM, because this is done typically either at manufacturing time of the IoT device or by personnel uh, before the device, the device is shipped in the field. So it's done by someone configuring the edge device, uh, shipping it to a customer. Uh, so we know it is, uh, we know what is the state. We know what is the good known state. So for us, enrolling the TPM is enrolling the device. And of course, a different setup is possible, but this is what we see to be the preference. Uh, so in my opinion, uh, it's interesting to explore the other possibilities, right? So then uh, once you have, the, the, the system enrolled, the, the, the TPM enrolled, uh, gets the question, okay, who can make attestation? Who can create evidences? Well, the TCG spec actually recommends the attestation key to have no authorization. No, like anyone could create an evidence. Why bother protect that? And uh, this is a good approach because you would catch the evidence is different. The order of measuring files on the system or measuring file streams or whatever you want to protect, uh, if it's different, you catch it uh, because the PCR register containing the evidence, the, the hash digest, will be different. Also, uh, in case the, the actual uh, integrity is different, right? the file integrity is changed, you would catch that too. So actually, uh, having a new authorization on the attestation key is, in my opinion, sound. But this is where it gets interesting. Uh, for example, uh, Nico Williams uh, in, in, in the next uh, bullet point here on the uh, well-known key for TPM attestation proposes that unless you have a, uh, a clear set bit in the policy for, um, what was it, uh, for, one of the, for one of the flags of the key, you cannot use it for attestation. Then Imran Desai in a talk about TPM2 policy gets even further by saying what PCR policies you can combine. And that's really interesting. I really recommend um, Imran Desai, who is the maintainer of the TPM2 tools. He really debunked this complex topic. So policy over at the station key is something we even saw recently from um, uh, Ernesto, uh, uh, a researcher at Infineon, who is using sealed keys for attestation. And this has its applications to have a policy over when the key can be used. In our experience, uh, that's not really necessary. For one, the key lives in the TPM. Uh, second, we use it from only from, from our um, secure right, space where the agent runs. And then even if someone generates an evidence and send it, we would catch that it's different, the order or the integrity. And um, that's a simplification, but at the same time, um, you would catch if it's just one evidence that, that that is false and so on. So uh, these two interesting talks I'm recommending because Tromel Hudson, um, the author of Safe Boot, and uh, Nick Williams came came about to a interesting method of using a non-TPM key, what they call a well-known key, then to import and duplicate that key and use that to perform a testation. So actually, the key comes from inside, wrapped in the activate credential make credential challenge response mechanism. It's really interesting. Uh, and and um, this is why I've put these topics here, because again, we've, we've made choices, we've made design choices. Some of them are customizables, you, know, you can change one way or another, some we, we have set for now, but still I'm, I'm trying to share what we puzzled around. Hey, should we have a TPM2 policy over the attestation key? Should it be a well-known key that comes from the attestation server rather than generated on the spot, right? And again, the enrolling question is really a 
yeah, a good one. Um, so moving forward, uh, design choices. Uh, one um, design choice from the start was to not use OptE. Um, it is my personal opinion, uh, just me, that OptE is bloated. It has too much things in it. Um, even the ARM trust zone recommendation is, trust zone is to put a minimum code base in, right, the, 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 the secure world. Opti doesn't seem to follow that. And I know there's a lot of good effort there. I know that there has been great, great, done, uh, great work done there. At the same time, it's, it's firmware. At this size, even if you configure it, you customize it, uh, this comes from the FAQ that the typical configuration is about 200 kilobytes, let, let's say. That's too much. Like It's too much for uh, for device that is memory constrained, that is performance constrained. It's just, it's too much. So we've chosen a different approach. We've taken the TFM, which uh, let's say a typical default configuration, it's about 60 kilobytes, 64, uh, and we've modified it to have the enough trust agent. So we're not running as a trustlet or some kind of a trusted application, we rather modify that. And uh, one of our benefits is that uh, what we attest is customizable. Uh, we can attest the bootloader because we run in parallel. We're the first to run. We can attest the device identity uh, or configuration or anything that is of interest, uh, user data and so on. So I'm rushing because I'm seeing that I actually have 15 minutes and I really want to take some questions in. Um, so TFM challenges. Well, our attestation evidence is tamper proof, right? It's created in the TPM. It's signed. We will capture. Uh, data integrity issues, uh, man in the middle attack with the nonce, uh, with the fresh nonce. But still, uh, who owns the network stack? Who is actually the one owning the network driver? And with TFM, uh, you can have a, uh, either uh, the trust zone controls it or the normal world controls it, or it's shared. I, I, I myself uh, was never able to get that to work. So you have to choose, okay, trust zone, is uh, sending a payload to normal world to send. Well, that's very easy to do the now service, right? You don't get fresh evidence. You say the device is not trusted. What do you do? That's a smart metering device on an energy plant. You, you send an alert every day that someone DDoS your devices and you need to shut down the plant or check it manually or like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to be a good tactic, strategy. But for some cases, like smart home devices, Hey, it's not a big issue, right? Let's have trust on there. Um, just uh, generate the evidence in a secure manner. Uh, send the payload to normal world. The normal world is responsible to, to sending it uh, to the attestation server. So that's another question, another challenge, I think, when doing attestation in trust zone that I would love to discuss. Um, yeah, so what I'll show right now, uh, because actually I couldn't find the router to connect the board, is I'll show you the quick start version uh, that is available in GitHub. Uh, so we open the, the station server. Uh, okay, that's, I, I had the wrong link. That's interesting. Um, that's here, atrius. Okay, it's without a www. Um, so I'll, I'll just show you the quick start version. So we make the agent, uh, let me just, uh, maybe I zoom a bit more. Okay, so we have three commands here, an act on board, start to run as a Linux service. Uh, the quick start version is for Linux, is to lower the barrier for evaluating at the station. It's not uh, the TFM version. Uh, for the TFM version, just drop an email to Svet. Um, and he'll provide you access. So when we enter our dashboard, and I want to really type the link here rather than uh, have it. Yeah, okay, I'm already logged in. So we have our dashboard, uh, and let's say here we have TPM enrolled from a device. We have the TPM certificate that it's a real certificate. Um, and then we have uh, also an integration with a key factor, which is a PKI as a service. Uh, provider, we have generated a um, device ID certificate to use. Um, and we also have some interesting feature about safety critical systems. We can actually attest the state of a GPIO of the TPM, uh, but that I guess is for extra talk afterwards. Um, so we have the number of evidence, good status, all that. So let's onboard a new node here and let me just uh, prepare my screen a bit. Um, so, so I'll take this comment, and because I'm under Linux, uh, not on the actual port, 
I need to do this. Uh, so I'm onboarding, I'm adding a new device to my system. And it says here that it's protecting the demo folder and it's protecting the uh, password file of Linux. So now that I refresh, we'll see, okay, I have a new device. We have the TPM certificate. We have the PKI certificate generated for my device. Uh, locally, you should be able to also see the same node ID here and here. Uh, so let's have our fresh evidence because right now we don't have an evidence. So we generate an evidence and now we have the good known state of the system. Uh, you have one evidence, it's good. Uh, so let me add an attacker as a user. Just let's say someone adds a user and we catch this. Let me generate a new evidence. There we go. And of course the state will be bad. And this is a great thing I like about the station because actually what you, what you feed uh, to compute the hash and then to the PCI register, it's up to you. It could be a file stream. It could be um, RAM. Like it's up really to the um, to the application, to the an actual agent in true zone to decide what to read from the normal world and what to actually attest, what to verify. So before storing the state, I want to go to the demo folder here weekly and say, hey, uh, let's not listen to one specific ad address uh, for SSH. Oh, I need permissions. Huh. Uh, let's listen for all addresses, right? This is, again, silly, but it actually happens in routers. And let's prepare a new evidence again. Uh, and we'll see that we have now three in total. Our state is still bad. The device case lock in this case, it's not accurate because I'm running the quick start version uh, on the board. Um, I, I could have shown you this. Um, so now if I delete the user, right, delete attacker. Okay, great. I generate the new evidence. Of course, our state will still be bad. Okay, that's surprising. I'm not actually protecting the demo folder. Ha! Huh. The surprises of live demos. What do you know? Uh, it seems I'm not protecting the demo folder. Check. I'm on master branch. Okay, well, that was surprising to me too. Uh, so, okay, so that's demo in a nutshell. I'll stop here to get your questions. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that was funny. So let me stop sharing my screen now. Any questions? No. Yes. Yes. It works. It, cool. it works. Yeah. It's Michael. So that was interesting. The way you enroll the new device or that test device. So what protects um, uh, your server from having thousands of devices enrolled by hackers? That's a good question. Uh, well, this is just for simplicity. So this is the public-facing server that uh, you know everyone can use to evaluate and try at the station. So we try to make it simple that all devices go under the user ID. So right now you've seen my user ID and you could actually add as many devices as you want up to a limit that we've set. And I think it's either 50 or 100 per, uh, per like a better user. Any other questions? No questions. Okay. You. I was, uh, I see that maybe in the chat there was some discussion uh, about the SPCs, those MediaTek and XPC with Microsoft Pluton. Uh, well, it's a variant of Pluton. So the embedded, the Pluton for embedded devices is still a firmware. It's different from the Pluton that goes into Intel CPUs and so on. The one in Qualcomm, the one in Qualcomm is expected to be actually a Pluton core, so silicon. Okay. So the deal that, um, and this is public information. So the deal that uh, Microsoft made was with Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm that they will be integrating Pluton silicon in the in their CPUs. 
And this will be a fact that maybe in 10 years, uh, when you buy uh, Intel or AMD system, it will not be having a TPM, it will be having a Pluton. And by the way, I'm still waiting on this Pluton public API. Uh, there is one guy very active in Twitter, uh, CISO of Microsoft or something like that. I wrote to him like five times asking about the public API, never got a response, haven't seen it. Uh, I doubt anyone has, but yeah. So I prefer having a TPM rather than Pluton right now. Dimitar, please uh, ask read the question on, on, on the chat, if you can. Uh, okay. Where does the measurement in your world start into the TPM? Is it from the initial boot block or trust zone code in the chip? Good question. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have access to the trust zone ROM boot code, right? So, uh, an actress is the first to start. We are configuring the trust zone parameters, uh, shared memory, peripherals access. And then the first thing we measure, let's say it's the U boot bootloader before passing control to the normal world. And then what U boot boots, uh, it's up to, it, to, to U boot. The good thing is that we can even continue further, further as we continue to live in parallel in trust zone, right? The agent continues to live. So we can attest uh, different stages as well. Um, I hope I answered the question. Okay, any other questions for the audience? You okay. mean questions okay. for me? Uh, One more question. Awesome. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. So I just wanted to, to add maybe that um, my opinion is that 90% of the problem with remote attestation is in the server and the stuff and the configuration that you've done. And so that's why I think it's really cool. Even if you can't start at the very, very, very beginning, that it's still useful because, you know, generation three, maybe you'll have enough volume that you can actually, um, that you can actually find the right NDAs. And that, that my experience is why people get, get screwed up with remote attestation is because usually you're, you can't do anything until you buy a hundred thousand parts from the vendor and if you don't know if you're the product successful you aren't going to buy that many parts and so you don't put remote attestation in your device because you can't afford to do it in the first day and, and i think it's very useful to say hey well maybe you can do it not quite perfect maybe um good enough uh, uh perfect is the enemy of good enough here and uh, version two can be better um, exactly. I, I thank you so much for this. For this, yeah, because the, the the problem right now it it didn't exist. We had Microsoft Azure Sphere that's vendor locked, which is not bad. I'm not saying Azure Sphere actually did a lot of things right. The issue is that you you're centralized the servers of Microsoft. Where in our case, you can run an actual server. You know, contact it. Let's talk about it. It's one of our use cases, how we started with the car manufacturer last year. They actually asked us, hey, we like this, but we want it on-premise. Done? No problem. We're using AWS. Okay, great. You know? Uh, so so uh, this was our PUC. Um, so what we're trying to achieve is give an attestation service for people creating embedded systems to use, evaluate, and try, and yeah, let's make it better. Okay, I think that we, we should wrap up this session. Thank mm -hmm. you okay. for the presentation and for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, really. Appreciate it. Okay, thanks a lot.